Hey everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and this is gonna feel a little bit different and a little bit weird. So currently, it is the 19th of September and it's quarter to 10, so 9.47 a.m. And this, I guess the whole point of this video is all about RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti, which actually launches at 2 p.m. UK time. So I've literally just had a delivery from Parcel Force of a card and essentially normally we we'd kind of do the whole you know review lots of glam lots of b-roll that kind of stuff sadly it's just not going to happen today because well we just haven't got time the card has only just arrived with us purely because it had to go to pete our written reviewer first he's kind of done all of his written stuff and then had to get it sent down to us to kind of do what we can do with video so sorry if this isn't kind of what you're expecting but we're going to try and still provide you with as much information as we can, but it's not gonna look as glitzy and glam. So let's start by, I guess, unboxing it, which, I don't know, I used to do unboxings back in the day, but you know, we don't really do them that much anymore. But you know, we've gotta kinda of work with what we've got, so, sorry. <laughs> so opening up the main box, you can see inside, we have, the Palette GeForce RTX 2080 Super Jetstream. So obviously there's lots of cards coming out uh, onto the market today and sort of, you know, in the in the coming weeks as well. You can pre-order a lot of them. We couldn't actually find this one for sale, well, anywhere. So I want to talk through obviously some of the main specs as I unbox it. Um, but obviously, as you can appreciate, there's only so much I can put into this video because we just wanted to make sure that we would hit the kind of, you know, launch date. So I will unbox it and talk about a few things. So obviously RTX 2080 is all about um, essentially more performance than the previous gen like you'd expect. Hopefully, you know, uh, better efficiency, lower temperatures, lower power draw, but also some new technologies coming into it as well. So the main one, obviously the clue being in the name RTX is gonna be ray tracing. So um, essentially ray tracing, um, you've probably all seen, if anyone's interested in the RTX cards, you've probably already looked up sort of ray tracing and what it's able to do. Uh, but there, I think there's still quite a lot of hoo-ha about ray tracing in general and some of the stuff that maybe Nvidia showed at their um, editor's days and the stuff that they did kind of, you know, pre-Gamescom in terms of performance with ray tracing enabled, without it enabled. So hopefully that's something that we're gonna dispel, you know, with, with the performance results that we've got. But talking through kind of what we have inside, obviously quick installation guide, so nothing sort of too fancy there. Tells you in many different languages how to insert a CD and how to install it. But as always, we would advise you to go onto the NVIDIA website and get the latest drivers from there. So you do get a driver CD, but again, I'm, I wouldn't use it. I don't even have a CD drive, so that's really not gonna work for me. Inside you have, I'm gonna be honest, an ugly cable. Uh, I've seen a couple of other people do unboxings on cards similar to this. And essentially, if you're gonna be spending the money, I mean, there's no MSRP for this at the moment, but we've looked around at the market to see what other cards from other AICs are kind of similar. And you're, you're probably gonna be talking 800 pounds, so like $1,000 US, maybe a little bit less, because you know the UK sucks when it comes to sort of price conversions. If you're spending that much money just on your graphics card, why would you be using something that looks like this? Yeah, I mean, as you can see, we use things like cable mod cables. They just look so much better. Or you've probably already got a decent power supply that comes with nicely braided cables. This to me is just a cheap afterthought. I mean, I, I don't know whether this is an Nvidia thing. It's probably a palette thing, but I know other brands are doing the same. It just looks cheap and nasty. So I'd appreciate if, you know, they could sort that out a little bit, but I don't know. That's just my kind of critique on it. So then we actually come to the card itself. So this is the RTX 2080 Super Jetstream graphics card. So a few things that we wanna talk about in terms of the cooler. Firstly, you will notice that even though it is a dual slot card, it's actually more of a triple slot design. So just make sure obviously if you are putting this in your chassis that you have the appropriate room for it. Other than that, I mean, it's a combination really of kind of plastic and I guess sort of, you know, a really sort of slim um, piece of, I'm guessing it's probably aluminium, uh, which is nicely sort of screwed onto there, but it does have quite a premium feel to it. We have got sort of this bit up here, which I'm guessing is probably going to light up. I obviously haven't seen anything of this card as of yet. You guys have just seen me kind of take it out of the box and everything. So there isn't really too much that I can show you there. 
Uh, we will obviously get it into a system and then I can show you exactly how it is gonna look. Other than that, I mean, main features, you can see that we do have a very large uh, heat sink area that's split into two with some copper heat pipes um, sort of, you know, protruding between the two and connecting through. A couple of connectors down here, which are um, gonna be for the fans. Uh, we have got two large fans on here. I'm guessing they're 92 millimeter by the looks of it. Uh, obviously with very subtle palette branding on there. Other than that, the card doesn't really have mass amounts of branding, which is quite nice to see. And it will um, sort of, you know, tie in with your system very nicely. Uh, on the top, uh, GeForce RTX up here. We do have the Jetstream logo and everything here as well. And then uh, you can see another connector for the fan here as well. In terms of power delivery, I believe it's around, I think it's 245 watts if you're not using the USB Type-C on the back, which I will talk about as well. Uh, if you are using the USB Type-C on the back, which is for sort of next generation virtual reality headsets, then you are gonna be talking closer to about 280 watts. So not the smallest on power consumption, but you know, still better than some cards out there. Carrying on with power consumption, you can see that we have two uh, eight pin connectors. Uh, I have seen some weird stuff on other cards where they kind of block off two of them instead of putting on a six pin. I don't know whether that's something to kind of combat, you know, um, price and, uh, and things like that. But yeah, two eight pins on here. And then we do have a back plate as well, which subtle branding again with the jet stream and uh, sort of Chinese symbols. I'm guessing it's Chinese, I believe Palette is a, a Chinese or Taiwanese company. So um, yeah, you do have that symbol on there as well. Other than that, I mean, there's only a few other things that I want to talk about. One being the NV Link connector, which you can see is a lot bigger than what we'd expect from an SLI connector. Uh, so we have got that. Uh, moving around to the back and talking about connectors, we do have um, DisplayPort and it's DisplayPort 1.4. Now, what that actually enables you to do is um, it has support up to 8K. Now, I've got to get this right. So it's 8K at 12 bit HDR at 60 Hertz. If you want to drop down to 4K, then you can do 12-bit HDR at 144 hertz, all through DisplayPort 1.4. Uh, other connectors on here, we do have another DisplayPort, HDMI, and a further DisplayPort. So we have no DVI on there, which I think is a very welcome move. Uh, I use HDMI and DisplayPort mainly. So yeah, I think that's quite a nice move. And then we do have the USB Type-C as well, which is going to be for um, your next generation VR headsets. So there's that. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is obviously specs. So in terms of specs, we don't actually know, um, I, I mean, I will know in a minute when I connect it up to a computer, but at the moment, they're not telling people what the base clock speed is. They're, they're more about sort of telling you what the boost clock is. I, I get it, it's a numbers game and boost clock, you know, that's up here sounds a lot better than base clock that's down here. So the boost clock on this particular card is 1860 megahertz. The memory clock speed is 1750, so that's 14 gigabits per second. Um, obviously we do have uh, newer generation memory as well. So there are a few other kind of, you know, things that have moved on from the previous generation. So we do have some cool stuff there. There's not really too much more I can sort of say about the card. I guess a lot of it is gonna come down to performance, but I will talk through some of the other kind of key things as I get it into a system. So let's get it into a system and get it booted up and we'll see what it can do. So as you can see, we now got the card actually in situ. So we've got it on a Z370 based system, typically of what we do for GPU tests. And I'm actually pleasantly surprised by how it looks. I mean, firstly, the green kind of ties in with the whole Nvidia thing. Um, Palette don't generally go overboard when it comes to RGB and in my opinion this is probably the right amount. Now I say RGB, I don't know whether this is just green or if you can actually control it. Again, I mean looking at the time now, now that we're recording, we've got yeah less than four hours to finish off this whole video and get it out to you guys for the launch at 2pm today UK time. So. Sadly, we'll probably come back to some of these things, like can you change the colors? Um, even like looking at maybe real-time overclocking and stuff like that. In terms of overclocking, uh, now that I've actually got it in situ and I've got the drivers installed, we, we were actually able to boot up GPU-Z and find out what the base clock speed is. Because like I say, when we asked Palette, they kind of said Nvidia don't want people to know. I don't know how true that is, or if it's just passing the buck, or if they want to shout about the higher number, which is obviously the boost clock. So, Base clock on this is uh, 1515 megahertz, so 1515 megahertz. And then obviously we have a slightly higher boost clock as well. Now, we, do, we were actually able to overclock this, so we managed to get an extra 155 megahertz on the, uh, the base uh, clock, which would obviously then help push the boost clock as well. And then we managed to get an extra 750 megahertz on the memory, which is pretty impressive. We were actually able to get slightly higher overclocks on the core clock if we kept the memory speed down and then obviously vice versa. But doing the two at the same time, those are kind of the figures that we ended up getting. 
So there's a couple of other things that I want to talk about before I kind of, you know, jump into the performance of this card. And one of them is about the ray tracing. So ray tracing is such a weird thing to try and get your head around other than all that ray tracing is. And it sounds really fancy and there is a lot to it because it is quite complex. It's essentially doing what light is meant to do in the real world. So what they're actually doing is simulating how light bounces off of objects and how it uh, has refractions off of different things, not just in a scene, but also out of a scene. Now you guys probably saw it at uh, the pre-Gamescom show that they did when they announced these cards, where they're actually showing, um, I think it was Battlefield 5, and you could see the flames go up on the side of the car. That was actually happening off scene. Whereas in the past, we've had stuff that's been happening on scene, and it kind of, you know, actually limits what you'd expect in the real world. So that's kind of a really short version of ray tracing. Now, one thing I'm actually really eager to see, and this is something I've got to ask Nvidia about, is are we gonna get ray tracing essentially like we did with physics, where you could have a, a GPU doing all of the kind of main compute stuff, and then have a secondary card just to deal with ray tracing? Because essentially, at the end of the day, we are going to have lower end cards. So at the moment, we've got the 2080, there's a 2080 Ti as well, uh, we are going to have obviously lower cards, so maybe a 2050 Ti. If you already have a 1080 Ti, you don't want to have to sell that to get a 2080 Ti to get similar or you know better performance. Could you just get a smaller card that could just deal with the ray tracing side of things? That's something that we need to ask in video, and I, th I think a very important question that a lot of people are going to be asking. Now, the other thing is DLSS. So this is just another way of doing anti-aliasing. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple of benchmark demos. Now it is worth noting that we were benchmarking in Final Fantasy 15 whilst recording it as well. And then obviously putting it into our, our video that you're watching now, uploading it after it's rendered to YouTube, that's gonna compress it. So it might not look as great to you as what it did to us. But what I wanna show you is two things. So one with temporal anti-aliasing on, and then the second video with the uh, deep learning super sampling. Now, what you'll probably find is that the DLSS looks a whole time just amazing in comparison to TAA. And it also looks a lot smoother as well. And you'll probably see from the benchmark scores that it was actually better in DLSS. It uses less resources to do it, but does it in a much, much better way that's more fluid and gives you better results. So let's look at that. So there you go, you got a first kind of glimpse of you know how DLSS compares against TAA and as you can see it is a lot more fluid and also just gives you just a slightly better feel for everything. Everything looks so much better and from what we can tell it actually uses less resources to do so. So great technology there. Uh, one thing I do want to mention as well um, about some of these features, uh, mainly on the ray tracing side, we've actually found in our own tests that 1080p and 1440p kind of harnesses ray tracing a little bit better. As soon as you start going to 4K, it's, it's, it's there, but it's not. It's one of them weird things. I, th I think maybe more than that, we need to do more tests ourselves. But speaking of tests, what we want to do is jump into the benchmarks and see how this card really does. So we're going to run it past all our usual kind of benchmark suite of programs at various different resolutions. So we've got 1080p, 1440p, and also 4K 2160p. So let's jump into that and have a look, and then we can have a little discussion. <laughs>
So there you go, guys. There you kind of have it. Um, are they the results what you were expecting? I was actually, honestly speaking, probably expecting something a little bit better. Not because, you know, it's just this is the next generation, but I guess it had been hyped up to such a point. But there was a thing of, does this performance increase include ray tracing? Does it not include ray tracing? For the most part, this actually did better, if not the same, as a 1080 Ti. Uh, so kind of, you know, what we expected there, I guess. I was expecting a 2080 to maybe even not be quite as good as a 1080 Ti, and sometimes it did it. For some reason, it seemed to do better in certain resolutions more than others. Uh, in terms of acoustic performance, I mean, that's all down to palette, and it seems to be kind of roughly where we'd expect it. There's a Vega card above it, I think there's a 1080 Ti above it. So, you know, they've done a great job with the Super Jetstream cooler. When it comes to temperatures, I guess they were kind of where we expected. Maybe I was expecting just a little bit lower. And power consumption, I was actually expecting a lot lower. Now, there has been some talk based around um, the actual idle power consumption on this. And we actually think that's maybe something down towards the drivers. Now, drivers obviously play a very integral part. Now, I know that Nvidia take feedback from consumers as well as reviewers like myself and YouTubers, and they will be taking all of the figures and all of the results and all of the feedback that we've been giving out today and working on obviously developing the driver to make it better. So I think a lot of the results that you saw today, I would take them as preliminary results. I think what we're actually going to see is update your drivers in the next sort of coming weeks and also games that are gonna have patches out there that firstly make use of DLSS, also make use of ray tracing and just give you general performance that's better than what we've actually had here today. Now, I'm not saying we've had bad performance. We have had extremely good performance. It has been pretty much what we expected. If not in certain games better, if in some slightly worse, but I think it could get better later on at, an, at a later date. So that's kind of my you know thoughts on it. My two cents, as Jay, Jay would say, for instance. Um, I'm really happy with it and I think RTX as a series moving forward is going to do extremely well. Let us know in the comments section, are you gonna go for an RTX 2080, 2080 Ti, or are you gonna wait for the smaller, sort of lesser models to trickle down the line? So maybe a 2070, maybe 2070 Ti, how far down is it gonna go? Or are they gonna kind of carry on with the GTX stuff or the lower end stuff? At the moment, we don't know, but we do know that this has been very hard work just getting this video out for today. So hopefully you guys appreciate it. If you did, remember to smash that like button, subscribe and click the little bell notification. We're gonna maybe sit down and do some more tests on this, see what else we can do with it, see maybe if we can overclock it a little bit further and maybe have some more videos for you at a later date. We just wanted to make sure that we got this video out for you today. And yeah, it's been tough, but we got there. There you go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.